శృతిస్మృతిపురాణానాలయం కరుణాలయం నమామి భగవత్పాదం శంకరం లోకశంకరం చైతన్య మహాప్రభు వాస్ అ ఫిఫ్టీన్త్ సెంచురీ సైంట్ ఫ్రమ్ బెంగాల్ హు వాస్ అ గ్రేట్ డివోటీ ఆఫ్ లార్డ్ కృష్ణ అండ్ ఎన్ ఎమినెంట్ స్కాలర్ ఆఫ్ నవ్యన్యాయ శాస్త్ర ఆర్ మోడర్న్ న్యాయ శాస్త్ర దట్ వాస్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ బై అ మైథిల బ్రాహ్మణ నేమ్డ్ గంగేశోపాధ్యాయ అండ్ ప్రాపగేటెడ్ బై రఘునాథ శిరోమణి ఆఫ్ నవద్వీప he is remembered and revered by the world today as one of the most exalted krishna bhaktas of all time what was practiced by him and taught to a smaller community of disciples and devotees has now taken shape in the form of one of the most influential religious movements in the present world scene the international society for krishna consciousness or iscon is the group within the gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya that has taken the teachings of chaitanya mahaprabhu to people living in hundreds of different countries the movement which he started 500 years ago has evolved itself and has now grown to immense proportions millions globally have taken to the worship of lord krishna chant his holy name with fervor and study the ancient puranic text of shrimad bhagavatam what is the connection between chaitanya mahaprabhu and our shankaracharya sampradaya was he an advaitin the madhva strongly reject the gaudiya vaishnavas claim that he was an incarnation of lord krishna in kali yuga what is the position of smartas on this pressing issue chaitanya mahaprabhu calls for our consideration on several counts Number 1 His life and teachings have become increasingly popular due to the aggressive propagation of iskon and many smarta brahmanas of Tamil Nadu who are bereft of focus on genuine shankaracharya sampradaya these smarta brahmanas of Tamil Nadu find the so called spirituality of chaitanya mahaprabhu attractive in their own pursuit of bhagwan through nama sankirtan number 2 he is revered by the gaudiya vaishnavas as the golden avatara of lord krishna in kali yuga those smartas whose minds are not deeply rooted in bhagavat pada sampradaya and those smartas who don't have focus proper focus on our sampradaya blindly accept the gaudiya vaishnava narrative and celebrate him as an avatara purusha number 3 his movement which was merely known for its bhagavat bhakti is being integrated into our prachina shankaracharya sampradaya by the modern day upanyasakas and bhagavatas the narrations of chaitanya charitamritam now appear in tamil nadu as universally acceptable alongside those of our acharyas charitams and teachings and number 4 as long as poor lost souls of the traditional hindus of india continue to drink in his deadly poison of giving up vaidika karma anushthanam and then performing nama japam and nama sankirtanam we need to know how to point them to the water of pure vedic life that alone can counteract it and save them from becoming patitas iskon is one root of entry of this pashanda dharma that was taught by chaitanya mahaprabhu another route of entry of this pashanda dharma is from a group of tamil smarta brahmanas who have been propagating nama sankirtanam in tamil nadu the influence of these men over the vast majority of laymen of our community is drifting them away from the prachina shankaracharya sampradaya number 5 it is our duty to expose the anti shankaracharya nature of chaitanya mahaprabhu and his followers that has been robbing of the smartas shri vaishnavas madhvas and hindus following other prachina sampradayas of their rich and varied vedic culture number 6 even a slight acquaintance with chaitanya charitamritam and the writings of the goswamis of vrindavan 
should make us understand that they did not accept the philosophy of Sri Shankar Bhagavat Pada. It is for these reasons alone, selected portions of his biography should be studied. Hagiographies like Chaitanya Bhagavatam say that he accepted sannyasa from an Advaiti sannyasi named Keshava Bharati and ignorant followers of Bhagavat Pada blindly accept him as an Advaitin. Did Chaitanya study the Brahma Sutra Bhashyam of Bhagavat Pada formally from his Guru after accepting sannyasa? Even if he was God incarnate, he must have studied the Sutra Bhashyam of Bhagavat Pada from his Guru to be accepted by the Shishtas of our community. He neither studied Bhagavat Pada Sutra Bhashyam formally from Keshava Bharati from whom he took sannyasa nor he studied Madhvacharya Sutra Bhashyam formally from Ishwar Puri whom the Gaudiya Vaishnavas claimed to be Chaitanya's Guru who gave him the Madhva connection. So, Chaitanya accepting sannyasa from an Advaita sannyasi like Keshava Bharati doesn't make him worthy of our respect and veneration. Advaita Khandanam that he made in the house of Sarvabhama Bhattacharya in Puri Kshetram is another evidence to prove that he was not an Advaitin. And these are the words of Chaitanya on the philosophy of Advaita. Vedana Maniya Baudhahaita Nastika Veda Shreya Nastikya Vada Baudhake Adhika Chaitanya Charitamritam Madhya Leela Chapter 6 Verse number 168 Iskon's translation of the shloka goes on as follows The Buddhists do not recognize the authority of the Vedas. Therefore, they are considered agnostics. However, those who have taken shelter of the Vedic scriptures yet preach agnosticism in accordance with the Mayavada philosophy are certainly more dangerous than the Buddhists. Jivera Nistar Lagi Sutra Kaila Vyas Mayavadi Bhash Yeshunile Haya Sarvanasha Srila Vyasadeva presented the Vedanta philosophy for the deliverance of conditioned souls. But if one hears the commentary of Shankaracharya, everything is spoiled. These words of Chaitanya clearly prove that he was opposed to the philosophy of Shankara Bhagavat Pada. And blaspheming the pious Advaita Sanyasis of Varanasi is another example from his life to prove that he was opposed to Advaita. The author of Chaitanya Charitamritam says, Mayavadi Karmanishtha Kutarkika Gana Nindak Pashan Diyata Paduya Adhama Saisa Mahadaksha Dhanya Palaila Saivanyata Sabare Chungite Narila The impersonalists, fruitive workers, false logicians, blasphemers, non devotees, and lowest among the student community are very expert in avoiding the Krishna consciousness movement, and therefore the inundation of Krishna consciousness cannot touch them. Bhagavad Bhakti and Vedokta Karmanushthanam culminate in Jnanam and Jnanam gives Mukti. Both Bhakti and Karma are not capable of giving Mukti directly. That being the case, Nama Sankirtanam, which is a part of Bhakti, can never grant Moksha directly as taught by Chaitanya and his followers. Nama Sankirtanam can only bring about Papakshaya for a Jeevatman. When an Adhikari for a Vaidika Karma gives up Karma Anushthanam as wrongly advocated by pseudo-Vedic personalities like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would become a Patita. Shruti Smriti Mamai Vagnye Yastadullangya Vartate Agnyat Chedi Mamadrohi Madbhaktopi Navaishnavaha says Bhagavan. What Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught is contrary to the words of Bhagavan himself. Once on his way to Vrindavana, he was passing through Varanasi. The devout sannyasis of Varanasi wanted to teach him the proper sannyasa dharma and make him study Brahma Sutra. Dancing, jumping and hysterically shouting in the name of doing Nama Sankirtanam is not sannyasa dharma. 
the author of chaitanya charitamritam blasphemes the advaita sanyasis for trying to show genuine vaidika dharma to chaitanya little do they realize that even the shri vaishnava and madhva sanyasis don't accept such a barbaric culture of dancing jumping and shouting defying the advice of the smarta sanyasis of varanasi he proceeded to mathura now the ignorant followers of bhagavat pada may still argue that the narrations of the gaudiya vaishnava hagiographies depict chaitanya mahaprabhu in the wrong way and that he was never opposed to the philosophy of bhagavat pada even a cursory glance of his disciples work will show that they have condemned advaita the so called smarta brahmanas of today's tamil nadu should understand that the six goswamis of vrindavan who were his direct disciples alone are authorities on the teachings of chaitanya among the six goswamis of vrindavana rupa goswami sanatana goswami jiva goswami raghunatha dasa goswami raghunatha bhatta goswami and gopala bhatta goswami only raghunatha bhatta goswami did not compose any written work in sanskrit the rest of them wrote books concerning krishna bhakti after studying the principles of bhakti from chaitanya mahaprabhu directly the youngest and the most prolific of all the six goswamis was jiva goswami who wrote a number of works in sanskrit that gave a strong foundation to the gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya the shat sandarbhas along with his auto commentary known as sarva samvadini give a deep analysis and systematic elaboration of the gaudiya vaishnava siddhanta these are an exposition and analysis of the esoteric message of shrimad bhagavatam as the founders of gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya neither chaitanya mahaprabhu nor the six goswamis of vrindavana wrote bhashyams on the prasthanatrayam the ten principal upanishads brahma sutras and bhagavad gita that is the reason the gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya can never be considered on par with the other vaishnava sampradayas to prove their legitimacy the gaudiya say that baladeva vidya bhushana who appeared a couple of centuries after chaitanya wrote bhashyams on the prasthanatrayam even this cannot make them a legitimate sampradaya the vaishnavacharyas of the past like ramanujar and madhvar wrote bhashyams on the prasthanatrayam to refute the philosophy of r shankar bhagavat pada although we do not accept the akshepas raised by them and although our acharyas and scholars have given samadhanams to their akshepas we still consider the shri vaishnavas and madhvas as followers of legitimate sampradayas and this is not the case with the gaudiyas chaitanya mahaprabhu failed to write bhashyams on the prasthanatrayam the five senior goswamis failed to write bhashyams on the prasthanatrayam and even jiva goswami who was the youngest and the most prolific of all the goswamis failed to write bhashyams on the prasthanatrayam instead of writing bhashyams on the prasthanatrayam to refute our acharya shri shankar bhagavat pada and then establish their siddhanta jiva goswami has only written polemical works like shat sandarbhas to establish their siddhanta in prakaranam 2 anuchhedam 2 of his tatva sandarbha jiva goswami has expressed the following views which differ from advaita he has argued against the jiva brahma haikyavada of advaita that is oneness of jivatma and brahman he has argued against avachhedavada and pradibimbavada of advaita vedanta he has argued against ekajivavada and then he has also refuted the advaitic explanation of jiva swarupa and ishvara swarupa as per advaita vedanta avidyavat chinna chaitanyam is jivatma and mayavat chinna chaitanyam is ishvara so all of this has been refuted by jiva goswami in his tatva sandarbha that being the case how can we accept chaitanya mahaprabhu as an advaitin when the followers of shri shankar bhagavat pada 
ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಲೈಕ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಚಸ್ಪತಿ ಮಿಶ್ರ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳು ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಅಪ್ಪಯ್ಯ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತೇಂದ್ರ ಬೆಲ್ಲಂಕೊಂಡ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮರಾಯ ಕವೀಂದ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ನೀಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಇರ್ರೆಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಲೆಟಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಫೋಕಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಲೆಟಸ್ ಶೋ ಜೆನ್ಯೂನ್ ಲಾಯಲ್ಟಿ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಭಗವತ್ ಪಾದ ಹರ ನಮಃ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಪತಯ ಹರ ಹರ ಮಹಾದೇವ